Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Fox 29 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Amanda Hall. Yesterday afternoon, 13 people were shot at the Topps Friendly Market on Jefferson Ave, a hub in the neighborhood and the only place to grocery shop. Ten people were killed and three more are receiving a recovering tonight. The gunman allegedly traveled hours to shoot and kill them in a racially motivated attack tonight. We now know their names. 32-year-old Roberta Drury of Buffalo, 52-year-old Margus Morrison of Buffalo, 53-year-old Andre McNeil of Auburn, New York, 55-year-old Aaron Salter of Lockport, 62-year-old Gerald, Geraldine Talley of Buffalo, 65-year-old Celeste Shaney of Buffalo, 67-year-old Hayward Patterson of Buffalo, 72-year-old Catherine Massey of Buffalo, 77-year-old Pearl Young of Buffalo, and 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield of Buffalo. We'll be learning more about some of these victims later on tonight. The three that were shot and survived, 20-year-old Zaire Goodman of Buffalo, 50-year-old Jennifer Warrington of Tonawanda, both of them were treated and released from ECMC, and 55-year-old Christopher Braden of Lackawanna, who is still receiving treatment. President Biden set to make a visit to Buffalo in the wake of yesterday's tragic mass shooting. He'll be in town with the First Lady on Tuesday. Today he addressed the crime at a White House event for a National Peace Officers Memorial Day, a day meant to honor law enforcement. We must all work together to address the hate that remains a stain on the soul of America. The hearts are heavy once again, but a resolve must never ever waver. Yesterday's shooting capturing the attention of the entire nation and taking hold of a grieving Buffalo community. To the Fox Box tonight, we're bringing you the very latest in the investigation and learning much more about the suspect. Plus, in the absence of one of the neighborhood's only means of food, the community is rallying to make sure people are fed. Also sharing the stories of some of those who lost their lives in this senseless violence. And later on, we do have a check on the forecast for the upcoming work week. But first, more than 24 hours later, we're left with more questions than answers. Authorities continue to investigate yesterday's shooting. The suspect, 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, is accused of traveling hours from Brood County near the Pennsylvania border to Buffalo's east side to carry out the attack which injured 13 and killed 10. Dan Schrack joins us live now with the very latest. Dan. Yeah, I, I want to start by saying the the scene here is is very somber tonight. There have been prayer rallies, cookouts, food distribution all day, but it's quiet now. All is this community here in Buffalo begins the healing process. Meantime, at the tops behind me, the scene remains very active as the investigation into this tragic mass shooting wraps up its first full day. Tonight, new information on the suspect accused of killing 10 people at a grocery store in Buffalo. Investigators confirming a previous threat led to the mental health arrest of suspected shooter Peyton Gendron. The state police responded, they investigated, they interviewed the subject, and they felt it was appropriate at that time to have that individual brought in for a mental health evaluation. The state police did their job to the fullest that they could at that time. On Saturday, police say the 18-year-old pulled into the parking lot of this Topps grocery store, armed with an assault rifle, tactical gear, and began shooting. In total, 13 people were shot, 10 killed. The hate-filled attack streamed live on social media, Governor Kathy Hochul vowing to hold social networks accountable. I want them to sit in the room, look me in the eye, and tell me, have you done everything humanly possible to make sure that you are monitoring this content the second it hits your platform. Investigators also looking deeper into the timeline of events, believing Gendron drove from his home in Conklin, New York, to arrive in Buffalo at some point Friday. We have identified some of the locations that he was at. We know he did some uh, reconnaissance on the area and in the store. Daniel Love owns a barber shop across the street and says the alleged shooter sat in his car parked in the business's lot late Friday. He sat there about 45 minutes before, um, about 45 minutes and before I left. He was, and he was just on his phone, he was looking across the street. He had a little bear on the side, that's it. Anything about him seem suspicious at all? I mean, he's a white guy over out here, but that's kind of suspicious, but not really. Also part of the investigation, an alleged hate-filled manifesto outlining a plan to kill black people. We have it, we're, we're not gonna comment any further on that, but we have it's being evaluated at all levels of government. 
And tonight, Gendron remains in county holding. He'll be back in court this coming Thursday. Meantime, the sheriff's office says before that court hearing, he will undergo another mental health evaluation. Live in Buffalo, Dan Schrack. Dan, a community and neighborhood that's grieving and quite frankly will never be the same. Thank you. Numerous resources are available to those experiencing grief following the shooting. Erie County is sponsoring free trauma and mental health counseling for anyone who needs it. Tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Johnny B. Wiley Pavilion. That's located at 1100 Jefferson Ave in Buffalo. Earlier, we shared the names of the victims of this attack, and now we share some of their stories. 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield had just left a nearby nursing home where she was visiting her husband and stopped to pick up some groceries. Mayor Byron Brown saw retired Buffalo Fire Commissioner, Commissioner Garnell Whitfield walking around the scene. He told the mayor the family could not reach his mother, Ruth, and they were worried she was inside the store. When the former commissioner arrived, he saw her car parked in the parking lot. Roberta Drury had moved to Buffalo from Syracuse to help care for her brother after his bone marrow transplant. The 32-year-old attended school in the North Syracuse Central School District. In a statement today, the district said in part, the news of the shooting so close to home is devastating enough, but to learn that a member of our North Star family fell victim to an extremist act of hate is unfathomable. Our hearts are broken by news of this despicable act, and they go out to the families and friends of Roberta and all of the victims. And in all of the darkness, three survivors, including 20-year-old Zaire Goodman, was in the parking lot when the gunman opened fire. Zaire's mother, Zanita Everhart, is a staffer for Senator Tim Kennedy. There was divine intervention for Zaire. He was shot right through the upper body. The bullet went directly through his lower neck, exited the back, without hitting anything in a bullet that was meant to explode upon contact, to maim and injure and cause the greatest of injury. Zaire is alive today. He and Everhart posting this message on her Facebook page last night, quote, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for all of the calls, texts, messages, and prayers. My son, Zaire, and was unfortunately one of the people shot at the tops on Jefferson today, but his life was spared. He is truly divinely protected. He is home resting and doing good. Here on Fox Buffalo, we will continue to honor all of the victims over the next coming days. That Topps location was the only grocery store in the area for many neighbors. And now that it's closed, Topps is taking steps to make sure people can still get groceries. The grocery store said in a statement today, knowing the importance of this location in serving families on the east side of the city, we have taken immediate steps to ensure our neighbors are able to meet their grocery and pharmacy needs by providing free bus shuttles services starting today. The schedule today is from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and then beginning tomorrow, Monday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily from Jefferson Ave and Riley Street to the nearby tops on Elmwood Ave. And there are more efforts throughout the community to provide food for the residents while the store remains closed for the ongoing investigation. Fox Buffalo's Emily Gersh has more on what's being done. And that was the first and only grocery store in this community that, we're, that people come to. So that's the only store. So when it opens back up, they, unless you go across town, there's no choice but to go back to that store and shop. Belisa Silsby grew up on Buffalo's east side. She has family members who still live across the street from the Tops Friendly Market, where yesterday's mass shooting took place. We know people we know who live in these stores. We shop in these stores from time to time. We walk, walk, live across My the street. My foster mother shops here every single day. Yeah. You know, she comes here to get fresh food, to make her food every single day. In what used to be a food desert, the Tops on Jefferson quickly became the center of the community, a place where friends and neighbors would catch up while they shopped. This is the only grocery store in this neighborhood. A lot of activity happens here. The security guard, I knew him. He was a very kind person. We talked whenever I come in the store with friends and family. Without access to food while the investigation continues, a local food pantry, Buffalo Community Fridge, has been collecting food donations at 257 East Ferry Street. They are also taking cash donations via Venmo at Beeflow Community Fridge. A lot of people in this neighborhood 
They walk to the grocery store. They don't have transportation. Earlier today, Governor Kathy Hochul said Uber and Lyft have also offered to drive people who live in the neighborhood to other grocery stores. We want to make sure that their lives, the, the disruptions that uh, were so, you know, the disruption of yesterday does not continue day after day. It was a constant reminder of what, what pain this community just endured. And so while Mayor Byron Brown and the governor both said it was important to reopen the store as soon as possible, there are some who aren't sure if they'll ever be ready to go back. We cannot go back into that store. We want a bigger grocery store where there's not going to be any trauma when we go in there. Many people I spoke to said that the security guard who was killed here yesterday was well known and well loved by this community. To learn more about how and where you can donate, you can visit our website, wutv29.com. Emily Garsh, Fox Buffalo. And just a mile and a half from the scene of the mass shooting, Sunday services were held at True Bethel Baptist Church. Community members and local leaders came together to begin the healing process this morning. There were moments of singing and dancing, tears and hugs, calls for justice and anger. The messages were all the same. It's time to stand up to racism. True Bethel Bishop and Buffalo Common Council President Darius Pridgen had this to say. If you silent right now, you're not a friend of mine. Don't invite me to your repast. Don't invite me to have words in your Black History Month. This is the time for black and white people, for Jew and Gentile, for Muslim to stand up together and say no to hatred. We ain't done nothing to you. Governor Hochul, Mayor Brown, and Congressman Brian Higgins were among a number of the elected officials at the service. Bishop Pridgen says none of them were invited. They showed up on their own to support the community. In an impassioned speech, Governor Hochul promised to do all she could to protect New Yorkers from guns and silence the voices of racism and white supremacy on the Internet. But this is an illegal of its own. This is a whole new dimension where you've attacked people because of the color of the skin, because you are a coward. And I want to silence those voices now and make sure that, yes, people will talk about Buffalo, but I want them to talk about Buffalo as the last place this ever happened. We will let this end right here because we are going to rise up. And all of our white brothers and sisters need to be standing up as well in churches all across this state, all across this nation. Because an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us because we are all God's people. And hundreds gathered to condemn racism near the scene of yesterday's shooting. A prayer vigil was held by the tops this morning where a makeshift memorial is growing and signs reading, quote, I love... I leave peace prints on white doves now stand. From there, a large group marched down Jefferson Ave chanting Black Lives Matters and no justice, no peace, including former mayoral candidate and community activist India Walton. People are mourning and reeling, um, but I also think this warrants a deeper conversation about white supremacy. And I don't want this to be swept under the, under the rug as um, an isolated incident. The flag in front of Buffalo City Hall are now flying at half staff. Overnight, Mayor Brown ordered all flags at city-owned facilities to be lowered. Taking a turn now to the weather with a first look at your forecast, here's meteorologist Mark McLean. Yeah, the forecast starts out dry for us tonight. Uh, temperature is still very mild for this time of the year. We're looking at 60s with a partly cloudy sky. Now that changes tomorrow morning. We've got a cold front on the way into western New York. Some showers, even some thunderstorms, especially east of Buffalo towards Rochester. I think that's going to be uh, where they target. But uh, a total lunar eclipse tonight. I'm going to have details on that coming up for you in just a few minutes. You want to see that cool looking orange red moon. And it's a cool air comeback also in the forecast heading into Tuesday. We'll talk about just exactly Exactly when that air arrives coming up. Still ahead tonight, the alleged shooter traveling hours to commit a tragedy tonight, hearing from neighbors in his hometown. 
Questions remain about the teenage suspect that allegedly carried out last night's mass shooting at the Jefferson Avenue Tops. 18-year-old Peyton Gendron is accused of traveling hours from Conklin, New York, in Broome County near the Pennsylvania border to Buffalo. Reports state he's been investigated before and had previously threatened a school shooting. The author of a 180-page racist manifesto published to the Internet before the shooting describes itself as 18 years old, living in a southern tier with parents and two brothers. Someone who graduated from high school and was enrolled at SUNY Broome with a major in engineering science. All of those details also describe Gendron. Samantha Crossan reports from Conklin after speaking with people who know the family and hearing their reactions. Today I spoke with neighbors to try and get a sense of the Gendron family and many of them tell me the news about the shooting was very surprising for them to hear because they knew of the Gendron family as well liked by the community as well as involved in the events going on here and the lives of their own children. The suspect, Peyton Gendron, was captured after police say he killed 10 and wounded 3 at a supermarket in Buffalo Saturday afternoon. Some neighbors in Conklin who know the family are shocked. They, they seem like very nice people, and I'm not the only person who thought that because I, I, I have multiple friends who know the family, and they didn't, ha they didn't have any, any sign of what Peyton had done, and I just, I wish it didn't end this way. I really didn't know the older boy, but the the boy that's in her class um he's a nice kid last thing you would ever expect from a child from that family clayton gibbs who goes to the same high school susquehanna valley is close with peyton's younger brother he says he did notice some unusual behavior from the suspected shooter saying he wasn't like everyone else. He had done some very weird things like he wore a hazmat suit to, to the school and started spreading some Nazi uh, some Nazi stuff that I couldn't I couldn't quite just understand fully and the shooting makes grandparents like Nancy Brown whose granddaughter is in the same district as the suspected shooter concerned for their safety and it's getting more and more prevalent. And, and that's really scary, and I worry with these two going to school. You don't know when they leave in the morning, are they coming home at night? Authorities are describing the attack as racially motivated violent extremism. Police say he shot 11 black and two white victims before surrendering to authorities. One Binghamton resident says to understand the cause of these events, people have to look further than holding only local and state leaders accountable. It boils down to the parents. It boils down to... Uh, what kind of media outlets this this individual was exposed to? Um, their group of their group of friends. In a manifesto that was written prior to the shooting detailing the attack, the author says that he was radicalized during the pandemic on the internet, not by anyone who he ever met personally. Right now, investigators are working to determine if Gendron is the author of that manifesto. In Conklin, I'm Samantha Croston. And still ahead tonight, members of the Buffalo Bills responding to yesterday's shooting. We'll hear from them when we come back. Yeah, just another summer-like day for Buffalo. Temps in the 70s, away from Buffalo. Lots of 80s showing up, but uh, summer is about to pack up and move out of town. I'll let you know when that happens coming up next on Fox. Weather vitals for today on the Almanac, 73 over 62, and that is obviously mild for this time of the year. Normally, we're in the upper 60s. Hey, something cool to see tonight. This is around 1130. The uh, moon passing behind the Earth, so the uh, uh, light that normally illuminates the surface gets blocked. That moon is going to turn a reddish-orange color as it moves into the umbra. That's why it happens. So we call it a total lunar eclipse, but what you get to see is a cool-looking Red and orange moon. Okay, let's talk about our next weather maker. It's just to our west. There's the shower showing up. I, I think we have a chance during the morning, even a few thunderstorms tucked in there, especially east of Buffalo, and that's going to be late morning, early afternoon. Now, beyond that, we start to dry out again. I think a lot of that's going to shift out into eastern New York heading into Tuesday, and Tuesday's a windy day. We're going to get some gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour and some cool air temps back in the 60s uh, future rain amounts not seeing a ton of rain here but i i think there's a better potential probably again east uh, east of the genesee valley and into central new york but it should be at least enough to wet down the sidewalk foxcast north towns what happened <laughs> look at these temperatures we're in the 50s by the afternoon it's going to be an early day high temperature in the upper 60s and to the south we'll see that uh, shower chance move out and uh, 50s move back in 
again into the afternoon. So seven day Foxcast uh, kind of back to reality. 61 Tuesday, windy day, mainly dry for Wednesday and Thursday back to the 70s. Summer makes a return Friday back to the 80s. Even some isolated thunderstorms heading into next weekend for Saturday. Tonight, members of the Bills are coming out in support of the community after yesterday's mass shooting. Today, Safety Micah Hyde posted his, hosted his charities of softball game, and after yesterday, he was having doubts about hosting it at all. But he says he and other members of the team felt it was an important message to send of togetherness in this time. You know, we had a bunch of conversations yesterday um, into this morning, and, uh, you know, yesterday, I'm going to be honest, we didn't feel right even having this game, uh, but then, you know, having conversations with, with some people um, you know we felt it was important to, to you know get the community out put some smiles on their face um, get the players in front of them and we're doing it for for a good cause I think all you can do is just like I said spread love and um, love one another and you know I think that you know, it was big throughout the last couple of years in society uh, you know obviously going through the COVID and and all that type of stuff to to really just reach out help each other and and love on each other Josh Allen also weighing in. He was at Hyde's charity game. Yesterday he tweeted saying he couldn't find the words to express his emotions. Today he promises help from the team. You know, we really haven't talked to the team yet. We'll be in the building tomorrow. I'm sure we'll talk about it. We'll figure out a way to help, you know, the situation, help the families out. Um, it's something that, you know, it's, you never think it's going to happen in your, in your community. When it does, you know, it, it hits home. I, I was sick to my stomach all day yesterday. I was flying back from my sister's graduation. And it was just, it, it's gut wrenching, it really is. And, uh, again, we'll, we'll talk as a team tomorrow and kind of figure out what we want to do. But, you know, there's no doubt that we'll have All proceeds from Hyde's softball game are going directly to the families who were impacted. And in another act of kindness, West Hare is donating $300,000 for grief counseling and other expenses for the families of the victims. And this is, of course, a story we will continue to follow for the days and weeks to come. That's the Fox 29 News at 10 on Amanda Hall. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone.